Tom Trusak here, Neve 2012 again. I'm here with Chris Morrison from Mead Instruments. I get your last name right, Chris? That's it. Excellent. And Chris is going to walk us through uh, one of their new babies, the LX600. I tell you, I was looking over this the other day, and it has been actually a long time since I've drooled over an SCT. But and technically, I guess this isn't an SCT, but compound telescope I should go for. It is a catadioptric optic telescope yes, for sure. Yes. So, uh, Chris? Well, this is our brand new Mead LX600. Uh, a lot of the technology that you're going to find in here was developed for our LX800 platform. Uh, the, uh, the telescope is really centered around two different components. Uh, one is our new F8 optical tube. This is our F8 advanced coma-free optics, which has an available baffle-mounted uh, F5 focal reducer field flattener. It has about three and a half inches of back focus with the uh, field flattener in place that allows you to put almost any camera combination and filter wheel combination on the back. <laughs> Uh, what's unique about the focus system here is the fact that we don't, we no longer have to deal with uh, image shift. Uh, we are still moving the primary mirror, which allows for the most flexibility and the most back focus of most telescopes. Uh, but we use a new Crayford-style uh, internal micro or uh, uh, zero image shift focuser. So we're actually using bearings to support the baffle and slider, so we get no radial movement whatsoever. Uh, and then we also added a dual-speed seven-to-one focuser for fine focusing adjustments. And then we topped it off with our new Starlock. Uh, our Starlock is our new integrated auto guider, uh, which does a lot more than a typical auto guider. Uh, many guiders will simply issue uh, direction and duration commands to, to do a correction, whereas our guider actually interfaces with the motor controllers and will actually tell the uh, telescope, no, go here, go here, go here. The update rate tends to be a lot faster. Uh, this will generally outperform other guiders by a fair amount. Uh, we'll guide down to the seeing or till about an arc second. Um, and in addition to guiding, we also have a wide field camera on top that will actually allow for ultra high precision pointing down to an arc minute. So during every slew, the telescope will actually take a reference image and then make a correction. And it happens so quickly, it only adds about three to four seconds on the backside of a slew, depending on the, the, the distance from its reference star. But it really starts to add this transparent function uh, that just lets you know every time that your object is going to be perfectly centered, regardless of how small your CCD sensor might be for photography. Um, it also has an additional function is a drift align assist. So when drift aligning your polar mount, you can actually go down to your meridian and horizon stars and the camera will image those stars, measure the amount of drift, and give you instructions on how to correct for them in azimuth and altitude uh, on your wedge. And it'll say, go counterclockwise four turns. It'll take another image and it'll say, go, go, go counterclockwise one turn take another image and then the number starts getting smaller and smaller and you can simply go to your other star. But that'll help uh, astronomers uh, who wish to image who haven't polar line before a great deal. Uh, I'm not an imager yet. Well, I've laid I have the... friends who are and have walked me through polar alignment, and, and it's not exactly polar alignment is not something I find fun. Yeah, I've laid on the so ground many a night trying to drift the line of the telescope, looking at that star drift and making adjustments, and not having to do that and just being able to turn the, the uh, handle is awesome. How long does that process take? You know, it can take uh, anywhere for three to four minutes. It depends on the level of function you want. I try to go for no drift for five minutes in each axis. Okay. Uh, but once we designed that system and kind of added all this to our our kind of venerable LX200 fork, we started thinking we need a better platform in which to kind of mount all this stuff to. Right, so we right. completely redesigned our wedge. This is our new X wedge. It's an all CNC machined aircraft grade aluminum wedge that's all machined from solid plate. Uh, no more castings. We've made uh, uh, adjustments in both strength and durability. We've added a center bushing so the wedge no longer sags when it's loose for adjustment. It tightens up. It's great. So it adds about 30% more stability than uh, past designs. And we think it's a perfect platform for our new LX600. Well, and you really, if you're watching this via the webcast at home or archive, you really have to see it to appreciate it. It's a very, very beefy setup. It looks very impressive. So you guys did an excellent job with it. It looks functionally and cosmetically. And we're just excited. It's our 40th anniversary this year. This is the third telescope system that we've uh, announced. Our LX80 right. uh, and LX800 were the first. Those have both started to ship now. Uh, the LX600 is next, and it's going to start shipping uh, sometime in late May. 
Uh, and uh, just last week we relaunched our Max 2. So we've added Starlock. We've made some mechanical improvements, fully disengaging worms and things to our uh, our big German equatorial mount Excellent. with our 20. Excellent. So that'll be next. And we're still got some stuff we're working on, and uh, we're excited to just have an up good upcoming year and and uh, bring more stuff to amateur astronomy and allow people to get excited about the hobby and to get back out and do it. Now, do you have a, anything in the pipeline that you can tell us about? Nothing just yet. Uh, the Max 2 is, is pretty new. We didn't even bring uh, one because it's right. still being prototyped. Right. Uh, back in our booth is our 16-inch LX200, which is still in the prototype phase. Oh, yeah. We're still working on the tooling to get the, uh, uh, the glass done, but we've added our Starlock to our 16. And the exciting thing about the 16 is in... The 16 has got a pretty uh, a rabid following, but in order to pull our line of 16, you always had to be equatorially mounted on a wedge or on a uh, permanent pier. And right. what we've done is we've adapted the tripod and wedge from our Max to the 16. So now it's the first field transportable polar alignable wow. 16 LX in our history. So it's added a lot of functionality to it. I noticed you called it transportable and not portable. It's transportable. I've set this thing up a lot of times in the field, and it's a two-man set up. Okay. But if you're going to be in the field for any number of days, it's well worth it to bring the big 16 and start looking at Mag 15 galaxies instead of having to go a little bit lighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can understand that. Well, um, I want to thank you very much for taking hey, some Tom, time out of your you. busy schedule. Appreciate it. So, and uh, we're out. Thanks. <laughs>